What's going on internet? IG here again today with part 3 of the switching to Linux Mint 17.1 series. Today we're going to be having a look at integrating your social networking accounts into Linux Mint 17.1 or at least how I need to get this stuff done so that I can obviously communicate with the outside world and have all of my cloud services and stuff like that linked in here as well. So first up, as you probably recall in the last episode where we installed a bunch of apps uh, and again keep those suggestions coming uh, for different apps that you enjoy. Uh, so obviously I've got Birdie here up and running as my Twitter client of choice. Uh, and we will continue to try and get some integration here with different messaging services and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to instant messaging, boy, there are a lot of choices out there with Linux and some of them are fantastic and some of them are fantastically ugly. Uh, for me, the one that I've had the most success with has been Empathy, the, uh, the instant messaging client. That's probably what I've used the most uh, over different platforms at different times. So that's what I'm going to try and install here on Mint. Uh, you do have the option of using Pigeon as your instant messenger, but I've always found Pigeon to be a little bit chunky. While it has support for a lot of different accounts, you can add literally any chat account on the planet. Uh, I found it to be quite chunky and not very good looking either. Uh, notifications have always been a little weird and uh, it also hasn't really logged or brought in any conversations that you've had before. So I'm going to try and install Empathy and see if we can get some decent uh, get some decent integration here as well. Now one thing that I do like about Empathy and the same can be said for Pigeon as well, you can actually install integration for Skype as well so that you can try and, uh, and you can obviously have Skype chat there as well. Now one other thing that I do enjoy about Empathy because it is quite closely tied with the GNOME project is uh, you can also integrate it into the uh, file manager. Now obviously this isn't going to work in Linux Mint because of the fact we are using Linux Mint's Nemo file manager, but if that is an option that you do want to explore, then you can use that on the GNOME desktop and uh, simply send things to Empathy uh, using, the, using a simple right click in the file manager, which is pretty handy. So now that we've installed Empathy, uh, we're going to also install Evolution so that I can manage my work exchange email account. Obviously, not everyone is using open source solutions, so it's always worth having tools that can connect with, uh, with proprietary network infrastructure like Microsoft Exchange Server. Uh, so obviously this will be able to handle my work email and also uh, staff calendars and things like that. So I'm going to install the Exchange support for uh, the Evolution mail and calendar suite. But for all of my personal emails and uh, managing all that side of things, I'm always going to be using the fantastic mail client known as Geary. Now Geary is a fantastic email client in its own right. It's lightweight, it renders emails fantastically, and, uh, and also it just looks clean. So if we open up Geary here, you've got a simple, uh, simple to-do list here in terms of uh, connecting with your name, your email address, and your password. So you give it all those, you add your account, and you're away. It does have support for multiple accounts, but you are kind of limited in terms of what sort of accounts you can add there, whether it's Gmail, Yahoo, or Outlook.com. So each of those are pretty fantastic, uh, and I will be adding my email accounts to those. In the meantime, you can see that now I've got Evolution installed here as well, so I can connect to my Microsoft Exchange server. So I'm going to get that underway, and then we'll come back once I've taken care of all the privacy stuff. All right, well, a little bit of time has passed. I've got my email account set up in Geary, and I am getting there with the Microsoft Exchange server in Evolution. I've done it before, but I've just got a few extra kinks I've got to work out to get the calendars up and working. But the other good thing that I can do with Evolution as well is add the Google accounts uh, to Evolution so that I can have calendar sync and notifications for the different calendar appointments that I have coming up straight here on the desktop. So next, let's have a look at Empathy and see what kind of integration we get here. So if we skip the Empathy accounts and add some messaging or VoIP accounts. So we, let's see, let's try Skype with a Dbus. Okay, and now I have added the chat accounts to Empathy, so I'm all pretty much connected. Now, the one thing that I haven't really looked into is using cloud storage. Now, there's a few different options out there. Probably the two that I use the most are both Dropbox and also OneDrive, which is the obviously the Microsoft account, uh, the Microsoft equivalent to Dropbox. 
Now, I don't actually, I haven't actually explored if there is a OneDrive client uh, for Linux. I mean, I know there's always unofficial ones, uh, but that's probably something I'm going to look more into in the future and update you guys on a little bit further down the track. But the Dropbox client is pretty simple. You just have to go into the software center again and download and install it from the software center. Uh, so the only other things that I do want to cover in this episode uh, auto mounting your NTFS file systems. Now, obviously I am running a dual boot scenario here. I also have shared data drives, uh, which I keep on a separate partition. So uh, there's this fantastic guide that I've come across on debianhelp.wordpress.com, uh, which gives kind of like an install tutorial after, uh, or at least with Linux Mint 17. Now, the, uh, the same can basically be said for Linux Mint 17.1. So I will link this in the description box below as, uh, as it gives you some great um, some great tips there as to things you can do to both install printer drivers to uh, get better battery life and reduce overheating with your laptop, connecting to Samba shares, basically all the all the extra complicated stuff that I'm not necessarily using all the time, even though uh, the chances of me coming across these things to use is actually pretty high. Uh, but I do like the way that we've got the auto mounting uh, Windows NTFS partitions here. So that's kind of what we're going to go off this time around. Usually I just edit the FSAB file manually, but for the sake of demonstration, let's try this one. So we'll, we'll sudo apt get install the NTFS-config uh, tool. Basically, it'll just install a simple little tool, tool for us that will enable us to automatically mount NTFS partitions at startup. And all we need to do is edit a quick policy there, create a directory like such. And now all we need to do is launch it from the menu, give it a root password, and we can now enter in a mount point for the different partitions. So we'll enter a mount point for it. as such and say enter and click OK and there we have it and we're all done now we just need to write we need to enable write support there for the uh, for dev SDA 2 click close and now we are done and so finally I think as a finishing touch let's install a dock and move the menu bar around because I've always been used to having the task panel at the top of the screen and uh, and I do enjoy having a bit of a simple icon launcher and also helps uh, pretty up the desktop in my opinion if that is such a word. So going to quickly install that and then we will launch it and I think we'll probably call it a day with the Linux Mint uh, with this part three of Linux Mint. And I will get back to you with another episode as to how this distribution is faring in my daily workload and some of the issues that I'm coming up against. But so far, this has got to be the quickest setup that I've ever experienced with a Linux distribution in terms of getting everything uh, integrated, set up, ready to roll. Uh, I'm very impressed with Linux Mint's scalability, its customizability, and uh, just its ease of use and its stability has been out of this world. Um, so I very much appreciate the work that the Linux Mint team put into their desktops. And uh, let's just launch Docky here real quick, just for the sake of it. And there you have it. I just have my open apps running on the dock down here. And let's just move the panel to the top of the screen. All I need to do now is restart Cinnamon, the Cinnamon desktop and all will be well. So that'll, I think that'll do it for this episode of Switching to Linux Mint 17.1. Again, keep up to date on Twitter in terms of sending me suggestions or sending me screenshots of what your Cinnamon desktop looks like and also continue sending app suggestions that you think will make a difference. Obviously, I am pretty keen to look at some more workflow videos as well, similar to my digital photography work, workflow and video editing workflow videos that I've done in the past. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you aren't on Twitter and you want to connect on Google Plus or Facebook, I am there. So definitely let me know what you think down there as well. Thank you all for watching and I shall catch you in the ne next episode. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.